The girl is so poor, her stepfather, who had been drinking for years, came into her room looking wretched. The moment the door closed, the girl had a foreboding. Her stepfather took the cello out of her hand and slapped her. Then he tried to hold her down. The frightened girl struggled for her life. Suddenly, this man died from a broken vase. Her name is Anna. She acted in self-defense, but her testimony was ignored in court only because her mother insisted that her stepfather had not tried to molest her. As a result, Anna is facing four to nine years in prison for self-preservation. She was sent along with other female prisoners to the notorious juvenile correctional institution for murder. Anna took a look at the scene outside and was full of fear about the unknown life she would face next. I don't know how far it went. The girls who got off the bus lined up. They were lined up for inspection, shouted at by a gang of male guards. They changed into prison clothes and saw the governor in a suit. His introduction was short but forceful. You do exactly what I say. Well, you do exactly what my staff says. How we doing? Everybody are doing good. Have a good day. Taking her allotted supplies. Anna enters her cell. Her roommate is Jeannie who has lived in the upper bunk for more than five years. Anna had no time to calm down before it was time to turn off the lights. The guard shouted. Anna quickly climbed into bed. At dawn, Anna's prison life begins. As soon as she entered the yard, she was greeted by a man who called himself Odie. She's acting like a big sister. After examining Anna's arm, she found that Anna did not have any characteristics of a bad girl. After all, the people who are here are the ones who committed the biggest crimes. Anna turns around and leaves. Anger and Odie. Odie pulls out the knife he's hiding at his waist and threatens to make her obey. At lunchtime, Odie and a team of helpers surrounded her. To avoid being bullied, she said she had to pay one dollar. 000 in protection money and join her white gang. Or the black gang next to her will turn on her. Tannulous Anna tries to leave, but is pushed down by Odie. In the laughter of everyone, Anna silently left because she always ignores Odie. Odie was so angry that someone beat her up and threatened to keep her quiet. Anna had no resistance and could only curl up afterwards, crying silently, and went to the infirmary to deal with the wound. Anna didn't give up on Odie. All she wanted to know was how to keep them away. The nurse suggested that we might go to the warden, so Anna went into the warden's office full of hope. She petitioned to be held incommunicado. The warden first expressed sympathy for her plight. Then he dug out the files and counted Anna's outstanding performances at school. He indicated that he could help her, but he made it a condition that Anna meet his physical needs. What does the ambiguous action make Anna understand in a moment? This warden is a monster in a suit. He got his way because the prison was full of young girls. In response to Anna's reasonable request, he only wants her to exchange her body. The wickedness of human nature left Anna helpless. The next day, Jane, the elder sister of the Black Cane, began to bully her. Anna couldn't stand it anymore and decided to fight back by herself. She walks towards Odie, but is stopped by a girl with short hair. She also pushed Anna with a look of disdain. This time, Anna fights back. Soon, the short-haired woman is pinned down by Anna. They were now pulled apart until the guards arrived. Anna's outburst is very interesting to Odie. She invites Anna to officially join her team, but there's one more thing Anna needs to do to win Odie's approval. Give Jane a good enough shot. Anna is also very competitive. She proved her strength with a fist. Prison guards arrived and separated the two men. Anna was put in the brig because she started trouble. 17 hours later, she was taken to the warden's office. The warden told her if she doesn't want to spend two weeks in the dark, she better have sex with him. And so Anna gets out of detention by selling her body. It was visiting day. Anna's mother came to visit Anna. Her mother still describes the stepfather as a good man who took them in. Anna is furious. They had a big fight. Mother refused to get up and leave. Anna was crying and yelling, never come back. During the free day, Jane attacks Anna in retaliation. And not only did Anna beat her up, her black gang got beat up by the white gang. Although Anna didn't start it this time. But the warden in order to meet personal desires, or will call her to the office. After satisfying the warden, Anna still fails to escape the revenge of Jane, who comes out of the brick. The struggle between the two gangs went on endlessly. Even the riot police were out in force. At the instigation of the warden, Anna became addicted to drugs. No matter how much Jeannie tried to persuade her to scold her, she could not change it. Finally, Anna loses control and even tries to hurt herself. After rejecting the warden, she was thrown into a dark solitary cell. As the days wore on, Anna went through a phase of withdrawal. She became increasingly out of control and even hurt herself with a broken dinner plate. Fortunately, 
Anna's life was saved when a visiting prison guard found her in time. The well-informed nurse saw at a glance what was wrong with Anna. The nurse was surprised that an excellent student who could have gone to a first-class university should be like this. Anna saw a lot of nasty things during her rehab. Her mother came to visit her again, seeing Anna now. Anna's mother cried that she was the one who should go to prison. She's gotta tell the judge the truth. She told Anna to do well and try to get out of prison early to realize her dream. Finally, Anna made it. She no longer suffers from drug addiction. The warden made no secret of his intentions. The only reason he gave her drugs was to control her. Too many young girls have fallen into the plaything of the warden before. The warden is convinced that Anna will make the same mistake again. But Anna is different now. She said goodbye to her decadent self. She erased the tattoo of her past with her own hand. This shocked her roommate Jeannie. Because she broke away from the organization, she became the target of bullying by Odie and others again. Jane bullies her too, taking pleasure in Anna's embarrassment. But Anna didn't hang out with them. She no longer makes trouble diligent to do her part, but the warden wasn't ready to let her go. He managed to get a cello. The moment she saw it, Anna burst into tears. She pulled the strings again. It seems as if it was only yesterday. After a short period of happiness, Anna was beaten more brutally by Odie and others for destroying the tattoo representing the white people. Her face was also cut with a knife and bleeding profusely. When the warden came to see her, his obscene behavior was seen by a nurse. Anna doesn't want to be controlled anymore and tries to get the nurse to help. After closing the door, the nurse asked if she was being controlled by the warden. Anna asks, Good afternoon. It's not just for you. This brought Anna to tears. Her mother didn't even believe her, but the stranger in front of her gave her unconditional trust and even offered to help her. Anna was moved to hug the nurse. However, this scene was the monitor after the warden to see in the eyes. First, he had Odie's men hit the nurse. He then called the nurse into his office and threatened her not to help Anna. The righteous nurse flatly refused. However, her kindness has brought herself to be cued. Seeing the nurse in a pool of blood, Anna broke down. The miserable Anna was once again the plaything of the warden. On that day, an artistic performance was organized in the prison. Anna played a touching melody on the cello given to her by the prison governor. The audience went from derision to envy. Almost all of them struggle in the mire of life. Anna's musical talent is beyond their reach. After the show, the warden tells Anna that she has a parole hearing next month. If she's good enough, She'll get out early, and good behavior is sex with the warden. Fast forward to hearing day, staff in view of her previous excellent results and good performance since arriving here, are ready to pass. When the warden was asked for his final opinion, he backtracked. He accused Anna of leading fights and drugs in prison. She even fought with her mother during visiting hours. When he was about to stamp it out, Anna takes out a mobile phone. It shows her having sex with the warden. Turns out, the day I got my parole hearing notice, Jeannie reminds Anna that the prison governor has been cheating on her. How could he just let her out to make sure this hearing is safe? Jeannie offers to make up with Odie and kiss her fast recording phone. While the warden was drunk on sex, she filmed everything, although the warden is all kinds of subterfuges. But with this video, Anna still wished to get out, get the chance of parole. The prison warden was found to have coerced female prisoners. He was led away in disarray. Anna finally took off her prison uniform and said goodbye to those who had helped her. She walked out of prison and started a new life.